So what if we could use trees to light our streets at night instead of electric street lamps? That dream inspired me and my team to set up a Kickstarter campaign to create a glowing plant. This was the first crowdfunding campaign for a synthetic biology application, and we closed the campaign a little over a month ago with just under half a million dollars in funding. You've probably all seen Avatar. This is not as sci-fi as it sounds. The first glowing plant was actually made back in 1986. That plant needed the addition of a, of a small substrate called luciferin. But in 2010, researchers were able to add the metabolic pathway so that plants could create that luciferin molecule as well. And they created a plant that could glow. Simultaneously, scientists have been working on bioluminescence in bacteria. And 2010 as well, a university team in Cambridge demonstrated quite how bright you could make bioluminescence. So we looked at those two things and we thought, what happens if we put them together? Can we make a bright glowing plant? We're starting with a plant called Arabidopsis. This is the fruit fly of the plant biology world. It's beloved by biologists because of its small genome. We're starting with that plant, and we've got over 8,000 backers in the United States that we'll be sending these seeds to. And then we're going to do a rose, because who doesn't want to light up someone's life? And then we can, and then we can work on bigger and brighter plants. NASA, NASA suggested these plants to us because they're really good for air filtering. So you're probably wondering by now, how on earth do you make a glowing plant? Well, you use a design print transform process. And we iterate through that design process, well, taking what we learn and then improving on it over, over a successive period of cycles. So let's go into it in a little more detail. We start with our computer using some BioCAD software designed by a company called Genome Compiler, who's one of the co-founders of this project. This software allows you to go online and find DNA sources that you, that you want to use. In our case, we take DNA from a marine bacteria called Vibro fisheri. That marine bacteria is used by squid to help them hunt at night. These squid build up little pockets of this bacteria in them, and then they can fly around in the bottom of the ocean and hunt for their prey. So we take those DNA sequences, we, we rejigger them online so that, so that they'll be able to be expressed by plants, and the software does that automatically. And then we press print. And really, it's like this. You press print in the corner of the screen, and you get a couple of options. Do you want to do it fast in the United States, or do you want to go to China and do it a little cheaper, just like manufacturing anything? We, we upload our credit card information. Each sequence costs about $8,000. Um, the file gets emailed to them, and, and they use a machine like this. This machine will print out the DNA that we sent them, the A, T, C, and G sequence, about 8,000 base pairs long, and they pop it in FedEx. It really amazes me that there are all these vials of synthetic DNA whizzing around in the US mail system. I mean, who would imagine? We get the DNA, and then we use this really clever little bacteria called an agrobacteria. An agrobacterium is nature's own genetic engineer. It's figured out a way to insert its DNA into plants. And what agrobacterium wants the plants to do is make bacteria food, so it can have a big party with all of its friends. We, we take advantage of that, and we use a specially engineered strain of this agrobacterium that, that can insert our DNA. So we get a solution. We take the DNA that FedEx sent us in the post. We mix it with the, with the bacteria, and Hey, presto, we heat it up to 38 degrees, cool it down to minus 78, and go through that cycle a few times. It's called cold snap transformation. And what it does is it opens pores in the side of the bacteria, and our DNA slides into that bacteria, and then we can use it. Dip the flowers of the plant into the solution with the bacteria, and the bacteria will put its DNA into a few of the female gametes, the sort of female sex organ, and when those plants pollinate, the DNA that we designed on a computer, and you could put anything in there, will be into the plant. Easy, right? But actually, the science is cool, but actually what this project is about is more than that. We're part of a new movement in biology called do-it-yourself biology. And we, we, we wanted to create a signature project that would educate people about the amazing power of this technology and inspire people to come up with their own projects. So 
So I'm very grateful that you guys have, have allowed us to come up here and talk about our project. Previously, research like this was, was confined to large, big research or, or institutions and large corporates. And what's happening is that small groups are getting together. It started online, and they're getting together and improve, building tools that means that anyone can do this. We have the hope and the vision that one day in the not too distant future, building a biological app will be as simple as building a mobile app is today, and that everyone can participate in this. What's really making this possible is the phenomenal drop in cost of the core components of this, the cost of reading and writing DNA. Nothing in human history has ever fallen in cost as dramatically as these two processes. If you think Moore's law is exciting, you think back to what's happened in the last 40 years from the computer revolution, just imagine how the world is gonna change with the next 40 years of these cost curves. And it's more profound than that. Evolution is entering a new phase. Until, until the arrival of multicellular organisms, microorganisms can swap, can swap DNA between themselves, meaning if evolution created something that was good, it could be shared between all the different organisms. But the rise of higher level organisms meant that, that that process couldn't happen anymore. And so evolution had to consistently create the same processes in different, in different animals or plant species. Now, for the first time in four or five billion years of evolution, we have the tools to be able to do horizontal transfer between higher level organisms, taking the best bit that nature's invented in all different parts and putting that together to create useful products for ourselves. Um, and, and this to me is, is just mind blowing. We're so lucky to be alive when this is happening. The, the future is, is very exciting. Um, as you'd expect from this, there's huge amounts of innovation going on. Large numbers of, of startup companies being formed, particularly in, in, in America, in China, all around the world. And, and both the UK and the US government have, have noticed this and highlighted this as an area for, for significant investment. The US wrote a national bioeconomy blueprint and the UK writing a synthetic biology roadmap. But the bit that really excites me is the do-it-yourself biology. These are these groups working to create open source tools and make this available to everybody. They form labs that enable people to collaborate, that provide knowledge sharing, and maybe most importantly, provide access to lab equipment for a fraction the cost of what would be, what would be available. I noticed there isn't one yet in Malaysia, so if there's someone in the audience who wants to start one of these labs here, do come grab me afterwards and we'll be happy to help. Genetic engineering is gonna become extremely commonplace. For $250, backers of our Kickstarter campaign were able to get a do-it-yourself maker kit. That gives them all the tools to enable them to create their own glowing plant at home in their living room. We met with Frim uh, yesterday and we're gonna send them some of their DNA and see if they can make their own Malaysian version of a glowing plant uh, suitable for the tropics, which is really exciting. Organic farmers are getting in on the act. This is the Arctic apple, which has been engineered so that it doesn't go brown as quickly. Look at those two. Would you rather eat the one on the top that looks a little old or the one underneath? underneath? Domesticated biotechnology, when it gets into the hands of amateurs and teenagers, is gonna create an explosion in diversity of new species, not the monolithic crops that big corporates and agricultural groups currently have. We're also gonna see kits for breeders of cats and dogs. You know, they won't have to just use fancy haircuts anymore. Designing genomes will become a personal thing. A new form of art as creative as art or sculpture. But it gets controversial. The same tools could in theory be used to create designer children. In a little over 10 years, it's gonna cost as little as $1,000 to be able to synthesize a full human genome. That means you could go online, load up your DNA with that of your partner, and create a designer baby. I don't know if we're ready for that. You know, maybe, maybe, we, maybe we remove propensity to cancer and other diseases, but what happens when the wealthy start creating super intelligent kids who are better looking? I'm not sure that's a fair world. We have to start thinking about this today and about the implications of this today because 
This technology is moving far faster than the legal and public perception can take care of it. We ourselves have been on the receiving end of this. Anyone who does work in this space will come across activists. We, we think we've got the honor of being the first Kickstarter campaign that someone set up another Kickstarter campaign to try and stop us. Um, they didn't raise as much money, but it's, it's something you need to be aware of if you're gonna do this kind of DNA hacking. So let's go through what are the really big implications for this and why I think it's gonna be so profound for our society. We're working on light source. You know, look at Africa, there's a billion people there with no electricity. We'd like one day to be able to take our plants and create them an eco, sustainable, efficient form of lighting that they can use for, for mapping their streets out. But we also face some big challenges as a society. We're way past the point where we've, we've maximized the amount of fossil fuels that we can take from the planet. And even worse than that, burning all these fossil fuels is destroying our environment and causing global warming. So we need some new solutions. Scientists are looking at this technology as a way of creating new biofuels. All of the energy in fossil fuels has come from biological processes that use photosynthesis to convert sunlight into energy. So why can't we harness that to create our own sources of renewable fuels? And scientists in Malaysia are really on, 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 on their way with this. They just released the sequence of palm oil, the, the full genome sequence of palm oil, which, which scientists expect to lead in the next couple of years to much, much higher yields from the existing crops. I think that will be very good for Malaysia's economy as this is the second biggest export. I don't think they were listening. Um, and then there's food production. We're projected, because we won't stop having kids, to need more than 60% of the food that we already have by the year 2050. Unless we chop down our rainforests, that increase in production is gonna have to come from the existing uh, farms and farmland that we have. And engineering crops is the solution for this. An early example of this is golden rice. Golden rice has been modified to include beta carotene, which is useful to prevent vitamin A deficiency, which kills hundreds of thousands of children a year. One study in India projected that widespread use of this rice would save 1.4 million healthy life years. And yet activists have been delaying this product, citing unknown risks. I think that's a terrible shame. And then there's 3D printing of meat. Not quite there yet, but we're, we're definitely close. There's lots of groups around the world who are working on synthetic meat that wouldn't require the huge waste of, of water, methane production, and waste of, of cropland that currently meat needs. And the third big application is in healthcare. We are DNA. Our intelligence, our brain, our body, everything that we do is DNA. So as we learn and enhance our understanding of these tools, we're gonna get better therapeutic treatments. One, one that springs to mind that's already been done is the drug artemisinin, which is used to treat malaria. Now traditionally, they harvested this drug from a plant, making it extremely expensive and unsuitable for use in developing countries, and also subject to widespread supply disruption. They've introduced the metabolic pathways that allow them to create this drug, put it into yeast, and that means that they've got a nice, reliable, sustainable source. And in the future, if we want to go really far, I think the human race will want to start expanding beyond this planet. Engineering organisms that can survive on Mars and be used to terraform the planet provide, I think, the best solution for us being able to make that planet habitable as well and reduce our dependence on a single fragile Earth. So to conclude, although we face great challenges, there's some fantastic technology and this we have a chance to create an abundant world in the next few decades. What we need is regulation that's based on sound risk assessment, not the public opinion of activists in rich countries who don't have to worry about food security. And there's a moral imperative to democratize these tools, to make sure that they're available to everyone, everywhere, to maximize the use so that they're not just something that can be used by wealthy elites and large corporations. This is DNA hacking. This is your technology. Imagine what you can create with it. Thank you.